Hi, welcome to SE Scholar's presentation on how to get your NCOSI certification in three steps. I'm your host, Paul Martin, the owner and founder of SE Scholar. My company is here to help you get your NCOSI system engineering professional certification. And I found that you can break it up into three steps. Learn the handbook, take the exam, and submit your application. I would love to say these are three easy steps, uh, but they're far from being easy. And I'm here to kind of manage your expectations as well as to help you along the way. So with that in mind, let's go into step one, okay? Step one is learn the handbook. Now the NCOSI SEP exam is totally based on the NCOSI System Engineering Handbook, a 305 page tomb uh, with 31 processes, it's it's quite extensive. And because that, and actually if you go to the frequently asked questions of the NCOSI website, they actually recommend that you study the current version of the handbook because it is the basis and reference document for the certification exam. In other words, every question on the exam would come out of the system engineering handbook. So I suggest, because it is a large handbook with a lot of processes, that you take my course. I've been teaching this since 2009, and I believe I have the uh, tools that you need in order to pass the exam. And what's nice about my course is because the, all the uh, lectures have been recorded, I've got all the material uh, available to you, you can study at your own pace uh, as you're doing this. The way we do that is a complete set of lectures. I do five modules that cover the entire handbook. And all those lectures are recorded. It's like 23 hours worth. And you'll be able to look at those lectures and follow them at your own convenience. I do have a method on how I teach the course. I actually use a comprehensive process flow diagram. I know it looks complicated because system engineering is complicated. Uh, but what I do is I walk you through all 31 processes, one process at a time. So I start with kind of a blank slate, start with life cycle model uh, process in the organizational uh, processes, go to agreement, and then technical management processes, ending with the technical processes, ending with the uh, disposal process. So I go through all 31 and as you can see by the diagram, I show how they all interact with each other and where these processes are within the context of the vast machinery of system engineering. I also provide some sample exam questions. I do quizzes, a sample exam. Now all these questions were made up by me by reading the uh, handbook and taking questions out of the handbook. So it's a question bank of about 587 questions. Every time you take a quiz um, or the sample exam, it'll be pulling from that question bank. So every time you take a quiz or exam, you can retake it and it's a different exam or quiz because it's pulling from those questions. So one thing that do this does is provide you with a familiarity and comfort level you need to pass the test. I also give you a study guide. You can review all the 31 process just before you take the exam. It has all the IPO diagrams and all the activities and it's a great way to get ready for the exam. Now I provide all of this within a learning management system called Canvas and I give you access to it. It has all the lectures, all the PDFs of the slides, of the study guide, um, even has testimonials of previous students. Um, and of course, that is available for you to study and be able to get ready to take the exam. So that after you've learned the handbook and taken my class, you're ready to take the exam. Now the exam is an open registration. You can do it if you're a member or even a non-member uh, and you can take the exam up to three times within any 12 month period. I suggest you kind of schedule the exam 
as close to when you finish studying the material that I provide you. Uh, you go to the Encozy website and register online. Now you do, you don't have to be a member, but you do need to register or get an account with the Encozy website. Once you go ahead and register, they'll send you the information required for you to schedule and to pay for the exam, which costs about $80. There are computer exams where you take them using uh, your own computer at the location that you decide. Now, you may not want to actually do it on your laptop in a Starbucks, but if you could do it in a, a quiet place in your home, perhaps with your, your um, desktop uh, computer, that would be good. You do need a camera. It's live and remote, and you are getting proctored uh, from video wise they're listening for any noise that may occur and they're watching where you're looking so and they want to know what's around your computer and around your room so they're doing their best to make sure there's no cheating going on and of course all that information can be found in the testing guide that Encozy uh, provides now the computer exam itself is 120 multiple choice questions that means most of them are five answers, but only three are the correct answers, which is similar to the way my quizzes and sample exam are structured. Uh, so you do have a familiarity with the multi-choice question and how to do it. The exam itself is two hours in length. It's a pass-fail um, situation where they give you those results immediately. If you do fail, they, they'll give you uh, rationale in terms of where you were deficient in what areas. Uh, they also give you a scratch sheet that's online. You can't take it with you or screenshot it or anything, um, but it's a way for you to perhaps take some notes prior to you going into the exam. So, oh, by the way, they also offer a, a pencil and paper exam at some in cozy events like the symposium or maybe some uh, local and cozy chapters. And you can check that out at the exam events webpage to see if there's one near you. All right, you've learned the handbook through my course. Now you've passed the exam. Uh, doesn't mean anything once you pass the exam because you have to submit an application in order for them to link that past exam to you so they can give you the certification. So the application, there are two types. There's the ASAP, the Associated System Engineering Professional. Uh, it's a one-page form. You just pretty much fill out your name, email, sign it, date it, give them the money, and you become an ASAP. That's pretty much all that's to it. Now, the CSEP's more complicated because it's 11 pages, and they ask for you to verify your education, experience, and have some references or advocates to show that indeed your experience is real. Uh, so it's an 11 page application. From an uh, education standpoint, they pretty much want you to uh, photograph your diploma or your transcript to show indeed you did go to school and learn this stuff. Now, if you don't have a technical degree, um, they do uh, give you the ability to use more experience to um, take that into account. Uh, go into the website, they'll tell you what that uh, criteria is. Once you've done your education, your experience needs to be uh, verifiable, but you need to write your experience. And what they're looking for is at least five years of experience. It can be more, of course. And they're looking for one year experience or more in three of the 14 functional areas because they want to see that you have experience in performing some, not necessarily all, of the functional areas uh, when it comes to system engineering. Well, what are those functional areas? Well, they're split into uh, system, tech, system engineering technical competencies. Those are everything within chapter four, all the processes that are there from requirements all the way to operation and maintenance. Uh, they're looking for management competencies, uh, system engineering management competencies. Those are in chapter five and six, dealing with um, the technical processes 
as well as the agreement processes. And then the support competencies, which is chapter seven for um, organizational project enabling activities, as well as the specialty engineering in chapter set, uh, 10. Uh, and then there's the other, that there are certain domains that have certain system engineering uh, functions and you write those down, your reviewers will look at it and either give you credit or not. Now, you're, as a successful candidate, they're looking for that balance across multiple areas. And what you need to do is look at each of these functional areas from requirements, engineering, all the way down to other down here, but also your organizational project enabling activities. Uh, they're looking for all of that uh, within your experience. So you need to kind of read all those and then figure out how much time you spent doing those activities. So here's what it shows you. The bare minimum you need to at least on three of those activities within those five years and you need to do at least a year for each one. So you could have a thing like requirements for one year, uh, decision analysis for the other year, and then do integration for three years. So that's acceptable, okay? Most likely you have more than that and you can split it up either which way you want, uh, but you want a year uh, for at least three of these things, okay, within the five years. I mean, you could have a year for five, that's fine. Uh, you're showing you have at least a year for each one. All right, so you download your forms through the INCOSI uh, website and um, actually get the uh, actual application, the instructions on how to fill out the application, the instructions for your references, and of course the reference form, uh, the endorsement form that your references would fill out. What you need to do is understand all these functional areas, then start looking at your experience and actually breaking it up within those functions. And then you have to estimate how, what is the time you spent on those functions. So we find most system engineers spend like maybe three or four functions during a certain time frame uh, that they're working. They just have to figure out, oh, I guess I did 10% configuration management, 30% design, 50% in um, integration, and then maybe another 20%, it, all adding up to 100% for those like two or three years. And then from there, you can figure out what how many months uh, by, of course, calculating that percentage of the years into months, okay? So once you do that, you actually put that on the form. You have to describe what you did within that functional area, but you need to write down how many months you spent doing that functional area. So if you see here, it says requirements engineering I only did it uh, for three months, but I was doing requirements engineering for a year and a half, but I only did a certain percentage and it wound up being only three months uh, worth uh, that I was doing. And they also want to know how long you've been in that position or that company. As you can see here, it's 23 months. They want to make sure that when all the functional areas add up for that position, that it doesn't go above 23 months. And you can see that when it translates how many months you spent on each functional area, it adds it up within that position down below there. You can see I only spent 12 out of the 23 months uh, doing actual system engineering. All the, uh, but I did more than that, right? I about four or five, uh, uh, well, it looks like I did three positions. You look for each position, how much, how much time you spent on each one. And what they're looking for on the last column is either 12 or more in three of those. Uh, as you can see here, I've, I've had 12 or more in four of them, so I meet the criteria. Also, if you look below, I'm more than 60 total months of my experience, so that also meets the criteria. So it gets a, uh, slightly complicated, but fortunately they have some sample uh, forms that you can look at that have been filled out, 
and you can study those and see how they did it. And you can download those from the website. Last but not least, you have to get your references together or your applications uh, advocates, okay? So what you're gonna do there is actually try to find three system engineers. Very important that your references do understand system engineering and they actually have to put that on the endorsement form. They have to explain how they've done system engineering. What Encozy is looking for is actual system engineers would see what you did and say, yes, we endorse the fact that these this person did do this functional area that they say they did. Okay, so, and they'll fill out the form accordingly and they'll email that into Encozy. You need three references. Now, once all that comes together, right, you've passed the exam, your application goes in, and your uh, references come through, you, that's all been submitted, and now you get your Encozy uh, System Engineering Professional Certification, be it a CSEP or an ASAP, depending on what you filled out. So that's it. That's how you do it in three steps. Uh, learn the handbook, take my course, okay? And I'll teach you the handbook, pass the exam, and then start filling out and submitting the application. That's all you need to do. So if, please join me in the course so you can learn the exam and start your way on this process. Go to se-scholar.com and I hope to see you at one of my classes. Thank <laughs> you.